Dr. Ben Bickman, drop all of your diabetes, hypertension, ED, and migraine medications. My hope at the end of reading that book, a guy would open up his medicine cabinet and look at the medications and he realizes I'm taking a medication for my diabetes. I'm taking a medication for my hypertension. I'm taking a medication for my erectile dysfunction and for my migraine headaches. Every one of those four disorders I just mentioned where the guy's taking separate medications to treat, every one of them has a profoundly relevant connection to insulin resistance. And so the person would read the book and in my mind, I would imagine he starts to challenge this idea that they're each separate disorders and say, well, to varying degrees, they're all coming from insulin resistance. And then the next question would be, how can I improve my insulin resistance? That is not going to be based on a drug. If you want to improve your insulin resistance, it is a lifestyle disease. The diet, the food that we eat is either the culprit or the cure. It's that food that got you where you are. And it's the it's a different type of food that's going to get you back to where you want to get improving your insulin resistance and honestly eventually in those instances of those four medications possibly getting off of every one of them without a doubt we have to account for energy I'm, you know and for heaven's sakes you know, i appreciate that as well or more than most my phd was bioenergetics which is the actual use of energy in living organisms so calories matter but I also think there's something absolutely foolish, if not totally ignorant, in attempting to fit a biological model into um, the, the, the perfect um, binary view of thermodynamics in the realm of physics. Mm -hmm. I think that is, I think that is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, and to, to look at protein, for example, and say protein is four calories per gram, that's the same as a carbohydrate BS. It's not Dude. comparable. There is without a doubt in organisms, hormones play a part. It is, it is physically impossible for a fat cell to get big unless insulin is elevated. Now, of course, you must have sufficient calories to fuel that fat cell growth. So calories matter as well. But in contrast, if insulin is low, there is no choice but fat cells to shrink. And one of the most obvious examples is type 1 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, a person can be eating 4,000 calories per day, and they may be excreting 500 of it as glucose from the urine, but that in no way accounts for all the calories. They cannot get fat, and in contrast, they cannot stay fat, which is why type 1 diabetics learn early on, unfortunately, that they can eat anything they want. And if they deliberately underdose their insulin, they will stay as skinny as they want. Now it's not healthy, it's not healthy at all in that instance, mm -hmm. but, but they've learned that insulin is the absolute controller of fat cell growth or shrinking yeah. you know, one way or the other. It has its hand on that lever. But again, if insulin is trying to stimulate a fat cell to grow, you have to have sufficient energy to be pulling into that fat cell to feed that fat cell growth. I just simply say, it's not just calories. We have to consider the insulin, but because that view is still so counterintuitive and challenges the dogmatic view that it is purely calories, I, I end up saying that side louder. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like I'm just an insulin guy. When in reality, I realize that energy must be accounted for, but attempting to perfectly balance calories, you're doomed because yeah. it fails to acknowledge um, the nuances of eating food. Like, you know, protein has such a high thermic effect of eating it that giving it a comparable caloric value to glucose is asinine. It's absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous. In contrast, if insulin levels are elevated, that physically slows metabolic rate. In contrast, if insulin levels are low, metabolic rate accelerates. And this can shift by as much mm -hmm. as 300 calories per day, as David Ludwig published about two years ago from Harvard. From the book, Why We Get Sick by Dr. Ben Bickman. Let's say a man opens his medicine cabinet and he sees medications for diabetes, hypertension, erectile dysfunction, migraine headaches. Every one of those diseases has a direct connection with insulin resistance. So the question is, how can I improve it? To improve insulin resistance, it is a lifestyle disease. It is our diet. Changing the food we eat can get us off of all of those medications. Calories in, calories out. Calories do matter, but 
It is ignorant to fit a biological model into a perfectly binary view of thermodynamics in the realm of physics. For example, to say protein at four calories per gram is the same as a carb is BS. In organisms, hormones play a part. It is impossible for a fat cell to get big unless insulin is elevated. You must have sufficient calories, of course, but if insulin is low, there is no choice but for fat cells to shrink. For example, a type 1 diabetic can eat up to 4,000 calories a day, but if they underdose their insulin, they cannot get fat. They cannot stay fat. Insulin is the absolute controller of fat cell growth. If insulin is trying to get a fat cell to grow, you must have the energy and calories for that to happen. It is not just calories. We have to consider the insulin. Attempting to perfectly balance calories, you are doomed. Protein has such a high thermic effect that giving it a comparable caloric effect as glucose is asinine. If insulin is elevated, that slows metabolic rate. If insulin is low, metabolic rate accelerates. This change is as much as 300 calories per day.